hey guys, a type of video that I really like watching on YouTube are what's in my bag videos. And if you're not in like the camera world, you may not know exactly what I'm talking about. For a lot of photographers and videographers, they do what's in my bag videos, which basically just kind of lays out their backpack that they take with them on shoots or on trips. I also think it's super important to share what gear I use. So in case that I create a video and you enjoy the video or you like what I'm doing in the video, that you have an idea of what equipment I'm using. Now, there's going to be another video that I'm going to talk to you about gear specifically and how it's not the most important thing about filmmaking or about photography. But with that being said, I do enjoy having new gear or having a lot of gear or, or just gear in general. I, I just, I, I, I like gear. What I have down here is my bag. I think it's like the Low Pro 450 or something like that. This bag has been with me basically everywhere, everywhere that I've traveled, every work event that I've had. Um, this is my bag that I take. The main reason I started really liking this bag was because of how you can change the inside of it. And like it has Velcro on the inside for you to customize the way you want it to be customized for the gear that you have packed in here, but also it opens up from the back side. So I'm gonna set it down to the side, but we're gonna open it and show the contents. And I just got back from a shoot yesterday, so I found that this is the most convenient time to shoot this video. Although I have shot in the B-roll beforehand, so if things look a little bit different, that's because we're using a different camera. Now I have two camera bodies and that's what we're gonna start with. This video is not gonna be possible without using one of my cameras. I decided to use the better one of the two. But what you're seeing this on is the Sony a7S III. Um, it's a camera that just released, I think it was in August of 2020, so the middle of the pandemic this camera was released. It basically has all the functionalities and the tools that I've ever wanted inside of a camera. It has 4K, 10-bit, 422. It has, you know, S-Log, S-Log 2, S-Log 3. It has a flip-out screen, which is just so, oh, I don't know why Sony, you took so long to decide to put a flip-out monitor on a camera. It just, it's helpful. It's not just for vloggers, but also for individuals who shoot at weird angles. Shoots 4K at 120 frames per second, which is great for slow motion, especially trying to get those B-roll sequences. But also, if you wanted to shoot in 1080, you can shoot up to 240 frames per second. We'll talk more about the pros and cons about this camera and my other camera and compare the two in a different later video. I know that we have a lot of videos set to talk about. They're all coming. It's been a shooting process to start up this YouTube channel. But we're gonna move on to the next camera body, which is also a body that I have relied on over the past few years, and that is the Sony a7 III. This camera has been with me since mid-2019, and in 2019, I decided to switch to Sony from Canon, really looking for a camera body that could do most of the things that I wanted to do. Now, it doesn't have a flip-out screen like the Sony a7S III. It just kind of tilts, which is super, super annoying because this tilt is never useful, and it doesn't tilt all the way down, so it's just kind of like at an angle, and this tilt was never really useful, so I don't know what that was for at all. Um, it did have like a joystick, which I really liked. I found out, I think a year after I'd bought this camera, that I had touch focus. Um, that's on me for not understanding my gear properly. So that was super helpful, especially when I was on a gimbal and I was just like trying to like get a specific point of focus. It was full frame. They had just fixed the battery issue. Uh, we'll talk about these batteries here in a second. You can shoot 120 at 1080, which was like kind of equivalent to everything else Canon was doing at the time. Shot at 4K up to 30 frames per second, so nothing past 30, but honestly, I used it for 4K 24 because that's how these videos were shot, and that's how most of my work videos are shot. A lot of the times we shoot at 4K at 24 frames per second because obviously that's like the cinematic look, but then we downscale it to 1080 on the exports. So really this kind of did everything I needed it to possibly do. So as we move along, I kept talking about batteries and batteries are super, super important to these Sony cameras. Now, what I've learned over the past couple years on shooting Sony is that, Jesus, why do people honk when they drive down to, there's no traffic out there. I don't know why they're honking, they're just angry. The actual Sony battery is a lot more reliable and better for the camera. Now, 
That's not to say that those other brands out there like Wasabi or whatever is not good and, and not a good backup battery. I had some overheating issues on the Sony a7 III and I haven't put a non-Sony battery into the a7S III. I don't know if I will because I'm starting to purchase only Sony batteries. Now they are more expensive. I mean, I have four batteries here. Let me focus. Oh, look at these batteries. Here are the four batteries. Um, I've got one battery, obviously, in the camera that we're shooting on right now. And Sony has done a great job to make these batteries long lasting. I can get about two, two to maybe three hours of shooting on one of these batteries. Two different sets of microphones that I usually keep on me. And that is Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. This is my shotgun mic that I throw on the camera when I'm just doing like a talking head and I'm not the main source of audio. This is just for like scratch, but like decent scratch. Continue on with microphones. This is the pack that I keep my other audio equipment in. And currently I've only got one set of them, but in the following year, I'll probably buy another. It's a loft system. This is the pack that goes on the person. This is what is actually connected to a camera. It can connect via XLR or it has an XLR to aux which is what I use. I feel like a beauty tutorial guy, look at that. Microphone that I use on it is the Sennheiser. I do believe this is called the MKE-2. Look how small this lav is. You can attach it to anything. There's different clips. There's different like, you know, ways to, to clip it onto an individual. You can tape it onto their chest. Uh, that is what a lot of people like to do is just tape it like right to the center of the chest. This lav has been clutch in many situations, but it also has been um, just expensive. I usually will keep this little guy, which is the Aperture M9. Uh, this came out a while back, and I've just, I've always just kind of liked it. You know, it's pretty bright for the most part, especially in like lighting, like dark situations. It's rechargeable, it has like, you can put gels on it. It's magnetic right here, so the diffuser and the light. But these two go together. Other things that I keep in my bag that are really, really helpful, um, obviously one, SD cards. So I keep a Pelican case of SD cards. You, you, you use them a lot. Uh, this one opens up. Sometimes it holds my cards in place, sometimes it doesn't. For the most part, it's done a good job. These are my SD cards that I have. I gotta get these like V90 and V60 cards to shoot. Uh, it's kind of a pain, but not at the same time. It's really nice to know that I have these cards just in case. The other thing that I like to keep in my bag for my lenses are variable NDs. Now, normal NDs or neutral density filters are great. I am in like different situations at all times. Lighting can change and variable NDs have been very useful to me. Now, this was the first one that I bought. This is the Peter McKinnon and Polar Pro Edition. Um, him and Polar Pro like got together and made some pretty cool stuff. This is version one. This was the two to five stops. What I found is that they're good. Um, they'll get the job done, but I never think that they're dark enough for like broad daylight or if you're shooting outdoors. So for the second one, which is also a Polar Pro and Peter McKinnon edition, this is the six to nine stops. I, I love this thing. This thing is amazing. I also think the packaging on version two is way better than version one. Um, this is a lot smaller. This backside, it's literally the cap, the back cap of it. And you just twist this off, you put it directly onto your lens. The outer portion is the lens cap when you're using the filter on your lens. And that wraps up ND filters. Super, super helpful. Um, definitely go and try to get some of these in your toolkit. One of the more important things that I take on every shoot, the DJI RS2 Pro. So it packs down in this little bag. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna build this out. Carries my gimbal. These are, these are great tools, especially for small filmmakers. This is something they should look into. But again, we'll talk about stuff like this more later. Could you try guessing the lens that I'm using right now in this shot? Put it in the comments. You can think about it, keep it in your head. Five, four, three, two, one. Can you think of it? What'd you guess? If you guessed 50 millimeters, you guess correctly. I've never really found myself using this lens. I've always bought one because it's like 
the lens to get when you first start. It's usually a cheaper lens. It's a good lens and a focal length to have, but I've never found it to be my favorite. Even for photography, a lot of people like shooting street photography with either a 35 mil, a 24 mil, or a 50 mil. Just never been me. Maybe one, maybe one of these days I'll take it out. Maybe I'll have a change of heart, um, but it is not my favorite lens. It is not my most used lens either. The next lens we'll be talking about is this lens right here. This is the Zeiss 24 to 70 f4. This lens is a zoom lens, so you can see that it can you know zoom in and out to 24 to 70. This lens was the first like major lens that I bought for the Sony a7 III. At one point, I only had this lens and the 50 mil, and I did all of my jobs that way. My favorite prime lens is this. This is an 85 1.8. The portraits that I've taken, incredible. Off angle shots with an 85 mil and that blurry bokeh background. It's just, mm. If I had more distance in this room, I would use an 85 mil instead of the 50. I'm just gonna be very honest with you. But I'm half, I'm midway through this room and if I'd used an 85 mil, I'd be like up against that wallpaper and we would just, it wouldn't work. So no, the 85 mil is not great in all situations. That is very, very apparent. But it is my favorite prime lens. It is my go-to prime lens. And if I'm gonna go out on a day of photography, the 85 mil is usually what I will grab. We'll talk about my new favorite lens. Um, and it could be because it's a lens that I've wanted since the beginning of my photo career, but it's never been in my reach of financial affordability. I like it. I really enjoy it. It is super expensive and I don't recommend getting it unless you know for sure it's, it's, a, it's a lens that you'll be able to use. But that is the 16 to 35. Mine is the G Master. If we're gonna talk about zoom lenses, this is my favorite zoom lens. It has everything you want, especially this stupid orange G Master logo. I mean, it's not stupid, Sony, please don't be offended when I say that. It's just super expensive. You can either buy this one lens or you can buy a camera. Please don't take this as a I have to have, must have kind of video. You don't. Obviously, if you're watching this right now, if you look at my sub count, it's probably not that high. It's like, what, I think we're in the 70s now. I mean, I'm proud of it, don't get me wrong. I'm proud of the 77 people that are subscribed here, but it doesn't make my videos any better than your videos. If anything, your videos may be better than my videos. I'm always excited to get new gear. I'm always excited to see what makes my life a little bit easier, especially on shoots and like what gear makes my life easier. And I think that's what you should be looking at. What makes your life easier and how you can use your gear to better your filmmaking and photography. If you like this video, hit that like button down below. If you didn't hit that dislike button, you're free to do that. Subscribe if you aren't already. I'm starting to sound like Peter McKinney Cannon, but we're gonna close this out guys take care of yourselves don't be a dick to each other and I'll see you guys again in the next video okay, it took 41 minutes 41 minutes guys we've been talking for 41 minutes you're gonna see like probably like a 15 minute clip maybe hopefully